Hi all, this is Danielle, Queen Bee coming at ya, and I've got here uh, a pendant that I'd like to show you how I made. Um, it's made with a large teardrop shaped piece of agate that has been dyed. It is a druzy, so there's this big, really cool druzy center. Um, it's got some coral colored 4mm Swarovski bicones here for an accent. And on other parts, I strung on just plain seed beads from that I got from a vintage bead box. Uh, so, yeah, those of you who know me as a wire wrapper um, also know that I love beads, so I like to incorporate those when I can. And uh, I like to doodle with wire, and this is kind of a heady, a heady wrap. Um, pendant um, in its ornateness up here especially. So uh, let's get on with the show! Woo! Alright guys, so today we're going to be using some flesh cutters and some uh, chain nose pliers some nylon jaw flat pliers and some round nose pliers. Wow, those ones are old. <laughs> the handle's all yellow. So yeah, just your basic tools. Nothing special. Uh, my piece of stone that I'm going to be using is, like I said before, it's a dyed druzy agate. Um, it's... Um, Oh, actually, that's a lie. It's onyx, now that I look at it. Um, anyway, it's like a nice carnelian color. It's 29 by 33 by 6 in millimeters. 63.65 carats, if you care about that stuff. <laughs> Obviously, your stone is going to be different. And as for wire, as always, I'm using Dead Soft. This is 20 gauge copper. Uh, and my weaving wire will be a 26 gauge copper. Dead Soft, of course. So I went a little hog wild and I cut three lengths of wire at about a foot each. So we're dealing with a lot of wire here, which is which is kind of fun because it gives you opportunity to, uh, you know, make all kinds of curly cues and fun shapes and play with weaves and stuff, which is kind of the charm, I think. So I've got myself sped up because I figure you don't really need to see me starting up and all that. I'm just starting with two lengths of wire right now and it's awkward because they're long but I'm starting towards the end of, of them and I'm just holding on to a tail of about I don't know two inches and just making a wrap you can do it however you like. Um, I was doing four wraps on the bottom wire and then three wraps around both. And then I would alternate the pattern. So you'll see in just a sec here. There we go. So three on the four on the bottom, three both, and then four on the top wire, and then four or three around both. And I just alternated that pattern for a while. That was kind of my my starter. So then I I did it so that it was roughly, I mean it's a little bit on the smaller side for this stone. But it's, it'll work. 
I just bent it around as I was going to see how much distance I needed to do. And it covers it, the perimeter, at about this point. But of course the teardrop is not like a, it doesn't have a strong point. So that was going to be one of the interesting challenges of this project. Now I've got the third wire in my hands and I am folding it in half, kind of like a piece of paper. And I'm going to pinch, pinch the, uh, the, the fold there. Just compress it a bit. There we go. Just like so. And then I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and make it into a tentative loop for a bale. <clears throat> and then I made another loop on beneath it and I kind of took the, the ends of the wire and went around. went around the uh, the wire that's now in between. That doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, but you'll see. You'll see, you'll see. It's always a bit awkward and weird in the beginning, cause, especially for me, because I never have plans. You'd think I would plan, but I don't. There we go. See how I've wrapped the wires? That's just to hold it in place. They're not going to stay that way. So that's why the wrap isn't very good or anything. I'm just trying to get this to size first before I start adding any of the fancy stuff. Just because I found that, well, adding the fancy stuff, even though that's the fun bit, um, it's kind of like drawing the eyelashes on before you've drawn the whole face. It's, you really need to get the stone secured first. I'm sure you probably know that, because it's kind of logical, but just in case this is your first visit to my channel, or your first attempt at this kind of thing, that's the sort of mindset. It's just kind of think of it in one big picture rather than one one little step at a time like we do with say bead weaving for example okay so I've got it basically now in the shape that I need it to be and I'm gonna slip um, this looped wire on so that it's part of the piece now. I mean, it is going to be loosey-goosey flying around a little bit, but that's okay. It'll get secured eventually. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> so I'm just fussing around starting, uh, starting your Looks like I'm straightening wire out right now because I must have kinked it while I was trying to do stuff. Yeah. That's a kinked wire. Alright. I forget if I thread it on to the base wires or the... I had to film this over a couple of days, so sometimes it's hard to recall exactly what I did. There we go. Looks like I've got it on there.
or not there we go there we finally self man <laughs> So I've sped myself along here because, holy man. <laughs> Some stuff you just don't need to see in full, in real time. It's just too obvious. So I am wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. Looks like I think I'm doing the figure eight wrap right now tell you as soon as I kind of show it okay back into normal time whoop <laughs> oh I'm just coiling around one wire all right that's all I did and I bent the other 20 gauge wire it kind of looks like a bobby pin for people who use bobby pins. Just some soft uh, bends. Those help actually with um, ornamentation later on if you, if you want room to wrap and not have to fight through the, um, the wires with your weaving wire because that's never fun. So I end up putting those, those on both sides of the piece towards the top of the, of the, uh, the, the point of the teardrop. Oh, what am I doing now? It's hard to say. Good thing I'm here to tell you <laughs> what I'm doing, right? Uh, I'm so informative. I'm riveting. Ah, okay. We're going to start adding beads. These are the seed beads I got from Vintage Bead Box, as you can tell by the logo. Um, I, I would... Judging from my bead IQ, uh, I would say those are like a size 10, Rocale. And I just, I, I, I thought it would look pretty with the, um, the kind of almost red color of the stone. So it was, it was a really nice match. So anyhow really simple just string a bead on your weaving wire and then wrap it so that you stabilize it and then wrap around without adding a bead and then add another one you you really need to do that's one thing that's kind of important when adding beads is you really need to um, provide them with adequate space and um, to keep them from moving around and getting kind of jumbled up and, and doing weird things on you is um, you really do need to do a wrap without a bead in between at least once if not more it really it uh, it's really essential but then again you might not be a bead kind of person so this might be completely irrelevant to you at this point <laughs> I like beads. Beads are delightful. So I'm just going around that initial um, weave that I did at the very beginning. There we go. I'm just sort of seeding. There's two beads there now. So I'm just kind of positioning them the way I want them to be and then uh, kind of getting the wire situated within the loops Let's see 
the previous weaving actually helps a lot because it keeps the wire stable because there's like a bunch of grooves so I've gone around the base kind of the, the curve of the drop with these little beads and now um, I've sped myself along here so that you don't have to Pay too much attention to the, you know, what I'm doing here. Ah, here I'm making those little bends to make the hair, the bobby pin bends. Because I've made my way around to the other side of the drop. And yeah, just quite literally, I bent the wire around around the pliers the round nose pliers and that's all there was to it and I've got the end of my weaving wire I'm just deciding how I want to deal with it I like to use it all if I can because even though copper is not an precious metal by any means it's it's always a fun game to use it all see if you can use it all and not waste it and I'm pr probably oh yeah 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 I'm just wrapping it around one of the lengths of base wire Go. I might eventually have to cut it. <sighs> I might have to cut it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are my tails there. <clears throat> That's going to be the back of the piece. Those are going to help me at the end to anchor the back of the stone into the setting. And I've been bringing my leftover tails of weaving wire to the back as well, just because it any any support you can get is is useful okay I'm passing through one of those loops that we did with the round nose pliers just to kind of get the wire the way I want it Because now we're going to be working with four um, tails. Oops, spill the beads everywhere. That's good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah, we're going to be working with four tails now, which is kind of fun because you get to do different things. And I'm just <laughs> butter fingering the stone here. There we go. Just trying to figure out how it's going to sit the way I want it to sit and trying to make the compromise that is inevitably uh, what you do in, <laughs> in this process. At least for me. There we go. So I've got it the right kind of size and shape now. Because this 
pear shape is very squat. So I had to widen it a wee bit just by manipulating it. Okay, we're going to bend the tails to the other side. Eventually. Oh, I see. Right now I've decided to turn my attention to the back. Okay. We're starting the process of stabilizing this stone in place by using the, the tails. Just using the round nose pliers to bend a somewhat graceful curve into the wire to catch it on on um, one of the uh, previous uh, we, uh, one to the other onto the other wires. There we go. And I'm gonna do this with all of my 20 gauge pieces. At the end, I um, at the end I weave in the weaving wire as best I can, and then trim the very ends off because they're pretty gnarly by the end. Okay, there's one. There's one. Okay, now we're moving along. I've sped up. making another arc there we go catching it Oh, that was good of me. <laughs> I moved us in. There we go. That's how you lock a piece of wire in place. Make a curl and then take your other wires or other pliers and go pinch and it'll stick. Usually. Sometimes it doesn't, but in this case it worked, so I was pleased. Hmm. <sighs> I hope you guys are all doing really well out there. You know, it's been a long while since I've done any wire work. I've gotten caught up in bead working. It catches me every time. Must be all the thread. Okay, I've got 
one of my tails and I'm going to put it through the setting, like curl it around it like that as um, one way to provide support to the back of the stone and to kind of connect the stone and the wire. So we're securing the stone more and more with every kind of step that we that we uh, take. So I'm going to grab my weaving wire on the spool. I don't know if I need to cut it at this point. It's always easier to work right off the spool if you can. The only time you can't is if you're adding something like beads or you have to pass through a closed loop. Um, then you gotta cut it so that you can pass through the end, pass through the uh, closed shape, whatever that, whatever your shape is. So bear that in mind for your, for your, when you are creating something. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at this from the front. And kind of evaluating the stability of things on the back. Okay, starting a new weaving wire, just passing it underneath, and we're going to loop around that one long wire on the side there, I can't remember. Give me a second here to figure out what I was doing. There we go. Okay, this is the figure eight. I'm pretty darn sure. I'll show us at the very end, but that's, I'm pretty sure that's all I'm doing. Just going, looping around one wire and then immediately looping into the other one. And just go and go and go and go and go. Yep. That's what I did. And I'm just deciding how I want to highlight the druzy element on the front here. Because it is a very prominent part of the stone. And then, you know, druzies are really cool. So, it's nice to highlight one if you can. And I think I, I think I did a pretty okay job of doing that in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
take my weaving wire and I'm going to um, make a coil around one of the wires that's kind of that's on the front there in a kind of swooping shape underneath the uh, druzy. Eventually. There we go. And the stone is starting to get nice and secure, so we can then move on to the, the more interesting, the more fun parts. Looping, 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 looping. To the point where I'm happy with it. So there, you can see there's two wires now that I'm figurating around by my thumbs. And I've got a little bit there bent onto the back to make the basket to hold everything in. Ah, all right, now I am making very loose coils because there's no point on the back doing any kind of super fancy wrapping um, to get the weaving wire to the front where I want to do something nicer. going to connect these two. I'm just deciding what I want it to look like. So there's that one that's going to go kind of under the druzy and I'm going to coil wire there. That was what that funky finger gesture was. There we go. All coiled up. And no place to go. And I've wrapped it around the other base wire that's there so that it's secured. I think it's because I have, um, my dad is an engineer, so uh, that's why I kind of obsess a little bit over structural integrity <laughs> as well as looks. Um, so that's all I'm doing here is just making sure 
that it looks the way I want it to look and will be um, strong because you know there's nothing worse than finding out your jewelry fell apart after somebody bought it that would be a nightmare that's never happened to me before but I fear the day that it you know could happen ah here we are we're adding some Swarovski bicones they are four millimeters in size and there are this gorgeous coral color I don't have the original label anymore because um, I've had them forever but they are really cool I, re I really like I like them I like them <laughs> and same principle here except for because the beads are bigger we have to make the stitches, if you will, of the wire a bit bigger, obviously. So I'm going to wrap, you know, with one th be threaded on the wire, make a stabilizing wrap, and then <sighs> have my thing go, and then uh, add another bead and, you know, do another wrap without a bead and carry on and with bicones especially because they have that obviously conical shape you need to make sure that you're kind of I like to like lean them a little bit sideways so that they have some um, some extra space to lay lay out and lay more gracefully next to each other if they're straight up and down, they'll leave kind of weird triangle gaps on the bottom. So it's less attractive. Because, I don't know, in my experience, the reason you want, want to use bicones is... See, I'm going to fill that side there. Uh, <laughs> there we go, all done. Um... The reason you want bicones is because they have fastening and, and the the way that they're shaped and all that. And it just adds instant drama and sparkle. So um, that's why I think it's more attractive to lay them kind of on a bias. Maybe 45 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to start doing some weaving here. I'm done with adding beads for this project. And I'm just deciding how I want to weave up at the top where the bale should be. I was going to do an upside down drop, but I decided not to because I do them so often that way. I didn't want to again. There we go. I've got two of my base wires and I'm I'm doing a I think it's a 3x3 three three weave but I can't remember. Anyway, I'm doing a dense wrap anyhow on these two wires and I'm going to wrap them around that kind of loopy deal that I made in the beginning. Because it's proving to be too small, the scale is just too small, it looks silly, so 
I'm going to make the proportion bigger by adding this kind of cowling around it. Yeah, you see how I'm wrapping around it like that? So it's still sticking out and stuff, but... And I've woven uh, my wires underneath so that I have those four. I have four now that I'm going to work with. And this is going to be a 3x3 three three wrap for sure. I remember. And I'm weaving right off the spool because the spool is cool. So I'm wrapping three wraps around the bottom three wires. And then I'm going to wrap around the top three wires three times and just do that. To my heart's content. I love that wrap. It's so pretty. I think it looks real nice. It works on four wires and it looks really nice too on uh, on just three, if you've got three. I think it's, uh, it looks really nice, like a checkerboard. Focus. There you go. So three. crazy how like zen this is, how mellow it is. Even just, you know, thinking about doing it like I am right now is making me very, very mellow. I highly recommend doing this kind of thing when you're feeling stressed or worked up. Going, I went around, or I'm working on going around the uh, the bail loop. And it does balance it out nicely. That's something to bear in mind with this kind of thing, is, is proportion. If the loop, like, if your bale is too small for the stone you're working with, then it just looks really fragile. Uh, it looks like it's going to break at any moment's notice. So you really don't want to go for that. That's not a good thing. So, just use your designer's eye. And if you feel like you're not comfortable with just going by eye yet, you will get there. Have faith in yourself. You can do it. 
um, you just just might be one of those people that it just takes a little bit longer to come to. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I just mean that in, it's just like that for some people. So um, just study things. Study, well, anything around you, really. Art imitates life, right? So study, you know, cars. Um, things in magazines. Uh, just whatever's around you. And you'll usually find um, when something looks wrong, it's because the proportion is wrong. That's usually the answer. Even with color. If something is not the right color, proportionally, so to speak, like it's just a bit too dark or something like that, um, then you'll, you'll, you'll start picking up on it. I'm just finagling the wire here, bending the heck out of it, because I'm, I, I was thinking to myself, oh, I can make a, a bale with these two wires, but I didn't want to, I didn't want the bale to be any taller than it already was, because it was already getting kind of, kind of big. So I thought I would leave it as simple as I could. There we go. I'm just deciding what these long tails I can what I can do with them. I originally was gonna make some dangles but I decided against it because I was running out of time to film this that's the other thing too is uh, keep in mind how long you can spend on a project for something like this I just didn't have more than a couple of days to to shoot it. There was just no way it was going to get done in a reasonable way because of all the editing and all the everything that goes into it. Okay. Speeding up here. I'm just doing a kind of a fun little messy wrap there at the top where I made some loops and because the shape is kind of tapering from kind of big you know like a big scarf or something around the around the original bale loops um, then you can have a, a sort of a small, almost hidden bale. And it doesn't look weird because you've got all this wire bulking it up and tapering it so it makes sense to the eye. At least it does in my experience. But, you know, I'm just yammering away trying to explain the concept of the heady kind of look, but I mean, it's your project, you do what you like. It's in the eye of the, eye of the beholder. And your stone is gonna be different than mine, and you know. Looks like I'm stabilizing the wire. But we're coming to the end. We are. 
And if you've stuck it out this long, I admire you. Thank you so much for doing that. I know this was an epic video. <laughs> it was kind of long. Uh, please subscribe. Turn that button to gray. And click the bell icon. And I'll see you next time.